Hello everyone and welcome to a very nice game that comes as a suggestion from a subscriber. Uh, it's from 1991, it was played in Bogota and it features a very cool line of the King's Gambit. It's between two Colombian players, uh, Marcio Melgosa and uh, Jaime Zulaga. Uh, so let's check it out. It's quite a wild one, you guys will enjoy it. Ponte E4, we have Ponte E5, not that, Ponte E5 and Ponte F4. The King's Gambit is on the board, we have E captures on F4. And now, not the standard Knight F3, but Bishop to C4. This is the the bishop's gambit of the king's gambit and um, it's inviting black to go for queen to h4 check which looks nice but it's nothing spectacular white will play king to f1 and later black will have to waste the tempo once white attacks the queen with knight to f3 and then white will try to keep harassing the black queen there are many cool games um, uh, throughout history that have uh, uh, been played this way so instead of just knight to f6 ignoring white uh, we have knight to c3 defending the e4 pawn and now pawn to c6 getting ready for that d5 central thrust with pawn uh, bishop to b3 uh d5 with e captures and d5 c captures and now pawn to d4 so nothing uh, nothing wrong with this with bishop to d6 and now comes knight g to e2 and it's uh, interesting that uh, even though this game is from 1991 uh, we reached the exact same position that uh, Yanni Pomnichi and Levon Arunyan had it, uh, in their game in the Magnus Carlsen Invitational uh uh, preliminaries uh, where bishop to g4 was played and uh, 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 Aronian just destroyed Nepo with his bishop to g4 move which was sad for Nepo because he really wanted to win this and promote his chessable course on the king's gambit but what are you going to do bishop to g4 is the way to go uh, but here we have pawn to f3 which which appears to be even stronger uh, but it's actually not g captures on f3 uh, we have castles and now bishop to g5 uh, the white King's defenses have been uh, ruined on the king side, uh, but white just doesn't care. Wh wh what is black to do here to, to attack the white king? So bishop to e6, uh, you could go rook to e8, but it's nothing uh, spectacular. Uh, you're not really threatening anything. So bishop to e6, getting um, uh, another defender to this d5 pawn, and also trying to get white to sort of hang a piece here. If knight captures on d5, seems like you should be able to do this because the knight is pinned. The problem is this queen to a5 check. You will of course capture first and then after bishop captures queen to a5 check uh, collects the the bishop on d5 even if uh, knight to c3 defending it now you can play knight captures on d5 because the queen is no longer on d8 so white ignored this white plays queen to d2 white wants the castle queen side and then put the rooks on the g file to attack the black king uh, we have bishop to e7 and now queen side castles and now Again, there is a game where knight to c6 was played. It was played in 2013 uh, between none other than Vasil Ivanchuk and Anish Giri. Uh, and uh, Vasil won that game uh, very nicely. Uh, but here we have knight b to d7. And it is now as of move 12 that this position has never been reached again. And it concludes fairly quickly. Rook h to g1. Just putting the rook on the nice semi-open g file. Uh, king to h8. The problem is if you go if you go something like rook to c8, just bishop h6. And now you're in, in, in a whole lot of trouble. If you play g6, you just give up the rook. And if you move the knight, then you no longer defend the d5 pawn. Uh, so it's pretty bad. So that's why king to h8. So you don't have to worry about bishop to h6. Uh, now comes knight to f4. Just getting as many pieces as possible, as close to the black king as possible. Knight to b6. If black can play knight, uh, knight to c4, black will be very happy. Uh, but White uh, just ignores that completely. Queen to g2. Now, imagine if the bishop was gone, uh, queen captures on g7 would be checkmate. Uh, so here we have rook to e8. Rook to g8 also possible, but um, a black figures that it's better to play rook to e8 and then move the bishop to f8 to defend the g7 pawn. So rook d to e1, a beautiful silent move by white, and now comes queen to d7, adding another defender to this uh, bishop on e6, uh, but it doesn't work. Feel free to pause the video and try to figure out why this is now completely winning for white uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting that uh, the, the, the the black king simply cannot be defended. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is bishop to h6. This is the only way to do it. You don't want to capture Then bishop captures, defends the g7 pawn uh, or, or play something weird. This is the way to do it. Uh, and now uh, you can't really capture because queen to g7 is checkmate. So that's out of the question. Uh, the g7, uh, the, the, this is a... Uh, 
uh, uh, a true weakness for black, uh, regardless of what happens to the to the to the bishop because it's attacked three times. So here, pawn to g6, also one of the reasons why rook to e8 was played. So white cannot capture the rook here. But now look at white's real idea behind bishop to h6. That's rook captures on e6. Uh, queen captures is impossible because the knight covers the e6 square. So you have to play f captures, and this now weakens the g6 um, uh, pawn, and that's why the knight to f4 now comes. Uh, uh, into play very nicely. Knight captures on g6 with check. You have to capture. If you don't capture, your only other option is king to g8. Then you play knight captures on e7 with check. And after the king moves, queen to g7 will just be a checkmate. There's no way for the black king to escape this. So you would have to play h captures on g6, but now just queen captures on g6 and there's no defense. If bishop to f8 guarding g7, you will just play bishop captures on f6 check. And after king h7, queen to g6 check, king h8, and this will now be checked. Made. So that's out of the question. So after rook captures on e6, knight to g8 was played. This is one last attempt for black to try and hold everything together. Uh, but now look at, um, at the journey this uh, <laughs> this rook um, uh, undertakes. Rook captures on g6 now. And again, not all that much to do. Uh, th there are too many lines open here. If you do nothing, just bishop g7 is checkmate. So the rook has to be captured. You could try knight captures, but then rook captures on h6. You're just done. Uh, down a piece, um, th th there's no playing this. So instead, uh, f captures on g6 was played, and now knight captures on g6 with check. h captures on g6, only move, and now you don't want to ruin the game by playing queen captures on g6. I hope none of you were considering that, because then bishop f6 and uh, everything is covered, there's no way to continue the attack. Uh, but in the game, after h captures on g6, uh, white just played bishop to g7 with check, and he was in this position, unmoved 21 as the title suggests. So suggests that um, uh, Jaime uh, Tsuluaga uh, resigned the game uh, as there is nothing more to be done here. The only way to play this is to move the king uh, and then queen captures on g6 is checkmate or to capture the bishop and then just a nice queen captures on g6, king to h8 or a king to f8 or king to h8 doesn't really matter because both end in checkmate. Now queen to g7 will be checkmate uh, but also queen captures on g8 will be checkmate. Uh, I myself if I have the option of checkmating with or without capture I will always do it without capture because it kind of seems cooler uh, to checkmate your opponent when he has as many pieces on the board as possible and I think your your friends at the bar and the library will will agree with this so I hope uh, you know th this rubs off on you at least a little bit. Uh, so yeah uh, that's the game hope you guys enjoyed it very nicely played by by Marcio uh, Melgosa uh, uh, very nicely done uh, in, in this beautiful line of the King's Gambit. And like I said, even though it was, it was played in 1991, uh, we reach a game, uh, a game that was played uh, between uh, Ivanchuk and the Nishigiri, where uh, this position was reached, where Knight B to D7 was, uh, where Knight to C6 was played, and also even even uh, sooner, this position where uh, Levon Arunyan crushed the Anipomnashi with, with Bishop to G4 here. Uh, but so the, the, you know, the, the theory expands, we will find new things, but uh, the, the the main ideas uh, have always been present and they uh, they are me merely being improved with the help of the engines uh, so yeah uh, that's the game hope you guys uh, hope you guys enjoyed it uh, I would like to thank uh, Merino Schmodi uh, Frank Brown the third Stefano Steinbach Alejandro Maldonado and David Kimura for a contribution to my channel thank you a lot I really appreciate it as usual you can check two of my previous videos here thank you all for watching and I will see you soon continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions such as this one and whatever else happens in the chess world. Uh, so thank you all. I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day.